From growing up in the cool and pristine city of Toronto in Canada to spending her summers in the warm and noisy city of joy, Kolkata, she's someone who's crossed continents. From being a top model to battling cancer and being a survivor, she's definitely come a long way and has given some really serious life goals. We have with us actor, model, mother and now an author, Lisa Lee, to talk about her debut book, her autobiography, Close to the Bone. Thank you for you know, giving us this opportunity. Thank you, you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about my book. Uh, Isa, I read your book you know, in part. Couldn't complete it. Okay. But, uh, but now you have to complete it, of yes. course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really intrigued by the title, you know, Close to the Bone. Yes. It has several you know, meanings to it. Right? Yes. But and by, that's yeah. the reason why I chose it as well. Um, there was a different uh, title initially and it was deemed a little too long. And now when I look back on it, thank God I didn't go with that title because Close to the Bone for me, it came out of actually writing a blurb for the book to give out to the press. And um, that's, I think, when uh, the alchemy, the magic often happens is just when I start typing. It wasn't a very conscious decision. And when I look back on that one sentence and I saw that phrase, Close to the Bone, so you know what, I think that that should be the name of the book because it's not just a reference to my blood cancer, which is a bone cancer, but to me it also implies um, stripping away everything, you know, coming to the core of who we are, and that's certainly one of the themes in the book. I mean, the uh, love of language and um, all things literary was definitely passed on through my Bengali father, but um, I've been a voracious reader. I think, you know, it, most writers will tell you that the best way of getting starting is also to read and read and read. And I've been, it's been a lifetime of reading, um, but I labored over it. I mean, sometimes things that look effortless, and thank you very much, I'm very glad that you feel that the writing flows effortlessly, but yeah, I, I kind of, in this way, I compare it to acting because also when you see an actor on the screen, it should look very effortless, right? If you see the effort behind it, then, um, then we pull back and it's sort of the same thing with writing but there was so much labor and work and sweat and technique that goes into creating that impression of effortlessness. I was very clear that it had to be very truthful insofar as it's my truth, my personal truth and candid. And I have no problem with that though. You know, I, you know, for me, why would you write a memoir if you're hiding more than you're revealing? I mean, yes, resilience is about not giving up. In, even in the face of statistics where everyone says you don't have a chance or in the face of a lot of voices and a lot of opinions. Resilience is a very inner process. It doesn't come from outside yourself. It's such a deeply inner process. That's, that's what I have to say about that. I mean, I won't say that there wasn't fear and I won't say entirely that it was a game, but I, I've also written about how I have this strange ability to sort of um, disconnect from the situation. I mean, I'm in the situation, but there's a part of me that's watching. The watcher, <laughs> the observer, which is why I was able to write a book and remember so many details of my life because uh, that's just how I'm wired. So it's not that I wasn't fearful, it's not that I saw it necessarily as a game, but there was perhaps this, uh, this message inside me that it was not going to be the end of me. This was not going to lead to my death. I mean, I will die one day, of course, like us all, but it was not going to be through multiple myeloma at that particular moment. And uh, I developed a faith around that. And what I want to say about this book is that I hope that in sharing these incidents, it should um, hopefully connect with the reader because I'm trying to speak about things that maybe we haven't had exactly the same experience. But in um, but I'm trying to speak to talk about my emotional travelogue in going through my life 
that is very universal. We all experience these things. We all experience fear. We all experience disappointments. We all experience great triumphs. You know, and we all are insecure in our own way. And hopefully, our journey in life is to go from this to knowing ourselves. Some question. I've been asked this question. To be honest, I would say no, don't change a single thing. Just keep adventuring, keep your spirit open. I own everything that I've been through. I'm not ashamed about it, so anything I don't regret, anything because it has led to who I am today. And I do believe that there's no contract we sign when we come into the world that says you're gonna get through life without experiencing pain or trauma or difficulties and failures. And it's a combination of all those things that has um, healed me in a weird way and created the person that I am today. And I think that that's one of the reasons why, why we enter our lives, you know, that is one of the um, missions in our life and we have to go through a whole variety of experiences to get there. Jhumpa Lari is a big one. Uh, my friend Tishani Doshi. I love Margaret Atwood. Um, I love Sukitu Mehta, who is also a friend. I love um, such, a, such a big variety. Alice Munro. Um, Kamina Shamsi. Um, honestly, uh, it's, there's a very, very, very long list of writers. Mainly fiction writers because mainly I read fiction. Point. I want my daughters to be strong, empowered, to know that they are perfect, that they don't need validation from anyone, and to be adventurous souls. You know, to be to find freedom from the mind, but also to be able to embrace life full-heartedly and you know with with arms wide open and eyes wide open.